prison will rise. Joseph Dawson, is there any reason why sentence should not now be pronounced? Plenty of reasons, Your Honor. Evidence I've been trying to tell you for 13 days. I object, Your Honor. During the whole trial, this man has been trying to obstruct justice with that thing he calls his ship's diary. Well, that diary is only hearsay. It's a piece of pure fiction. You keep your two cents out of this. <laughs> Silence. Your Honor, I've been handed this same magoo for 13 days. You let Captain Butch Reagan come in here and tell a pack of lies it is fiction. He goes back to sea like a hero. I got the truth here. Why don't you make old man Morley come down here and listen to what goes on aboard his stinking death wagons? Why are you all so afraid of the truth? One more word, young man. I'll have to hold you in contempt of court. All right, Your Honor. You're the skipper here. But I'll make you listen someday. I'll make the whole world listen before I get through. Joseph Dawson. For the crime of violence and mutiny aboard the Morley Line cargo ship Laura Live while on the high seas. The court does now sentence you to 10 years in the United States Federal Prison. Well, you spoke your little piece, Martin. Now what are you going to do? You sure boasted a lot. You was going to get Joe off by reading your blessed diary in court. It takes more than the truth to keep a man out of jail. Hold that up, will you, Con? I'm trying to think. It takes more than thinking to keep a man out of jail. Oh, don't mind me, Martin. I, I'm sore and I'm taking it out on you. It's okay, Con. I guess I was shooting my mouth off too much about getting your brother out, but... I don't know. I thought this thing would do the trick. Oh! I'll leave it late, Con. You've done your best, Martin. No, I didn't. But I ain't that easy licked. I'm gonna make them listen to me if I have to read that thing from the courthouse steps. I'll do better than that. I'll go straight to old man Morley himself, what I should have done in the first place. He owns the ship. I'll make him listen. What if he don't? Well, if he don't, I'll... I'll rub his nose in it. See, too bad I cleaned it off so good, bit. He's a waste of his time. They don't listen to him. I tell you, forget the whole business and get married. All right, to who? To him, Martin Eden. He's a very busy guy, Marie. Besides, he's never asked me. Excuse, sir. Yes? One man, Martin Eden, outside. Eden? From Lower Life Ship. Send him away. Excuse, sir. Won't go. Old time stay. The man from the trial. I don't want to see him. Why not? Might be amusing. What's this? Martin Eden, the man who made that commotion at the trial. Here? Oh, don't have him in. Please, sir. Who's old man Morley? I am. What right have you to force yourself into my home this way? Now, take it easy, Morley. Don't hand me that, Magoo. I got something to say, and I ain't taking no more runaround. Now, listen, I got enough right here take to... Take that thing out of my face. Not until you listen. Joe Dawson got 10 years because your judge wouldn't allow this diary to be read in court. I got the whole thing down here in black and white, everything that happened. Mr. Reed, I... my name is Bristol. I have too much respect for manuscripts to see you wave that one around like a shillelagh. Carl Brissenden? None other. In... Not the author. An author. You wrote The Giants? I thought I did. Listen, I, I learned to read almost by reading that book. Listen, I, I read it nine times. I lost count. Hey, listen. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
Uh, is that the manuscript of what you call the diary of a death wagon? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's her. Let me read it, will you? Oh, Mr. Brissenden. That's too much honor. I ain't looking for honor. I just want Mr. Morley to read it. I want somebody on that side to learn the facts. All right, Mr. Eden, but this isn't the time nor the place. Come to my office. When? Tomorrow would be a good time. This is no place. You understand. Yeah, all right. All right, I'll come tomorrow. But remember, I'm not taking no more run around, see? Story. What do you say we go to my place? I'd like to come along too. Do you mind? You should be flattered, Mr. Eden. You've changed Miss Morley's interest from music to uh, literature. All right, Mr. Eden. Go ahead. Way it begins. January the 14th. I boarded the Morley cargo ship Lorelei tonight. The minute I laid eyes on her ugly black hull, I knew her for what she was an iron coffin, a death wagon bound for the hot latitudes. Hi, Butch. Captain Reagan to you. Yes, sir. Captain? None of your lip. What's that you got? Still getting your nose dirty in books? I thought I learned you a lesson before. Giants by Carl Brissenden. Nice going, Reagan. I didn't know you could read. Don't forget things, Captain. You the new cabin boy? Yes, sir. Well, come aboard. Don't stand there like a swab. What's that you got? A book. It almost fell in the water. Is it yours, mister? I don't have no books on my ship. But I thought that... I don't have no thinking either. Remember that. Remember that, I said. Yes, sir. Thanks for salvaging the book, kid. I got one, too. A book. The kids, give it to me for a present. When I run away from the orphanage. That's the stuff. Grin. Don't let nobody know when you're hurt. Just swallow it and learn to take what they hand out. I'll fix them. I'll fix them good. No, not yet. You see, this here's his ship. On board, you can't hit back. That'd be mutiny. But you can chalk things up. Someday, we'll catch Reagan when we're on shore. And the shore ain't his ship, see? <laughs> You kid. Don't write that. Don't write what he done to me. Stop it. Hey, stop it. Don't, Mart. Don't, please. Listen, kid, if you can take the beating, you can stand to read about it, can't you? Kid 
kid has been sick for several days now, and I guess you can't blame him. It ain't only the worms and the food, it's the beatings he's been taking from Reagan. Listen, Mark. You gotta help us. The boys won't stand no more. I just says to him, polite like, Captain Reagan, sir, I says, that last mess of maggots was kind of inferior, sir. And I think you better check up on your butcher. And he says to me, Mr. Dawson, sir, he says, that meat don't come from a butcher, sir. It comes from a garbage dump. Then he hits me in my glimmer. And that ain't all that's the matter. My girl is beginning to feel it. Look. You see? Joe's got so thin she don't wiggle him good no more. Uh, I'm just skin and bones. I've got to feed her up again, see? Uh, she's feeling peaky. Yeah. We all of us need to put some meat in our bones. We've all got to go together and see Reagan, Mart. You know Reagan, Mart. You can talk to him. We can't. If we could make up a committee and interest you. Listen, don't you care that he gets a dollar a day to feed us pockets all but a nickel and then gives us maggots and weevils? Sure, but I eat it. I got more important things on my mind. If you don't like it, why don't you go into the officer's mess and grab yourself a handful of Reagan's night lunch? Only don't come squawking at me. Oh, listen, Mart. It ain't only us. It's the kid. What about him? There's some food he needs. He can't eat this slop. Reagan's keeping him down the hole in the lazarette until he does. Well, let him starve, then, if that's what he wants. The kid's got to learn his lesson the same as anybody else. Now get out of here with that sentimental magoo. Hey, in, Mr. Eden. Help yourself to a little midnight snack. Thanks, I, I will. You'll have to forgive this uh, pot luck. Yeah? Yes, it's better than maggots. Well, in that case, have some more. <laughs> I always knew your belly was soft. over the side some dark night. If I don't get you first. Remember what I said.
for Reagan. Come and get it. Now it's our turn, Reagan. Get your book, Martin. Let him go, Joe. We'll get him ashore. Listen, Mark. It's him or it's us. Let him go. If we do, vote alive. Joe, get out. Hand over that gun. Not until I put Reagan down the lazarette like he done with the kid. That's mutiny, Dawson. The courts will say different when they read what Mark's got written down in his book. You killed a kid? Knock him up, Joe. Maybe that ain't enough. Keep out of this. You too, Mart. This time it's between Reagan and me. He ain't running around loose no more. I'm warning you, Dawson. You'll get ten years for this. Shut up. The whole stinking bunch of you make me sick. Dawson and Mart Eden are the only ones who got a spine. As for Mart and his books, him and me got our own way to settle things. The rest of you belly acres, I'm sick and tired of your squawking and squealing. Lead on, Dawson. I'm glad to trade a few days of my tazaret for ten years of your life. Reagan. Yeah? I thought you might like a few maggots. You and me talk the same language. We learn to talk it on these kids. We use the same words, maybe, but they mean something different. Like mutiny, maybe? I got it all written down in my book, just what happened. The whole thing from beginning to end. Your end, Reagan. That's what you think, mister. The court will think different. Books ain't worth the paper they're written on. You've been afraid of books all your life. But what I got's more than a book. It's the gospel truth. It's a weapon. It's the thunder to make people listen. It's rockets of lightning in the dark, dirty world that men like you, Butch Reagan, want us to live in. It's Martin Eden and all the rest of the boys saying no more, mister. No more death wagons in the world. Well? Well, what? Bruce, don't be hateful. Sorry. Sorry, old boy. I'm afraid it won't go. It's too... too brutal. Too crude. But it's true. Truth, Mr. Eden, is just a... pair of spectacles. A matter of one's own particular astigmatism. I don't get you. A man sees what he wants to see. People that buy books want romantic escape. They don't want 50,000 words of... Sordid brutality. Mr. Brissenden and the Giants, you said yourself... Certainly I said, while I was talking to myself. You're the only one I ever met who read that book. I read it. My two favorite readers. But seriously, Mr. Eden, if you want my advice... I do. Then don't judge a book by its truth. Judge it by how many people want to buy it. They won't buy the death wagon. But I don't want them to buy it. I, I just want them to listen. They won't. Not now, anyway. But if you had a name, a reputation... But in the meantime, what about Joe Dawson? He's still in prison. Forget him. That's easy said. I'm afraid you've forgotten some other things I've said in the Giants. Live your own life. Don't get mixed up in other people's troubles. Write about what you like, but give life a twist. Don't be twisted by it. Address here? No, it. Silver Hotel. It, uh. Silver Hotel, Oakland. Tell you what I'll do. Just to prove I'm right. Now, I'll send this to a publisher I know. Oh, say that. Oh, don't thank me. It'll come back. I guarantee you that. I know, because I've been to the same mill. I wrote the same way when I was your age. Tough stuff. Life in the raw. I was on fire to reform the world. Luckily, I reformed. 
And I've done fairly well ever since. But I'm afraid you're too honest. You'll break your head against the stone wall. It's been broken before. <laughs> what you say that don't bother me none. As long as you'll help. I don't want to reform the world. I just want to get Joe Dawson out of prison and I think I can do it. Nothing's ever beat me yet. Nothing or nobody. I believe you, Mr. Eden. Oh, thanks. Thank you very much, miss. Good night. Good night. Good night. Take her home, man. She's been wanting you to all evening. I guess that just ain't in the cards. Good night. That was a filthy thing to say, Briss. <laughs> Ruth, I know you like a book. The mating instinct at work. Don't be absurd. Ruthie, you couldn't keep your eyes off him all the time he was here. Really, stop. <laughs> I think it's marvelous. Take him in hand. Get him away from this notion of writing about justice and truth and all that nonsense. Turn him into a man who knows how to behave in a drawing room as well as a folks room. Teach him some grammar. Get him some good clothes. And you, uh, Martin Eden, I say he'll be something. Hello, Joe. Connie. Come on. How you doing, Joe? Swell. <laughs> they treat me all right. Couldn't be better. Better eats here than we ever got on the Lorelei. Three meals a day and square ones, too. Don't tell anybody, but I'm enjoying this vacation. Yeah. Sure. Here, take a look at my girl. She's having a swell time, too. <laughs> look. <laughs> she wiggles good now, see? She got some meat on her bones. <laughs> yes, sir. We're having a swell time, me and her. Everything's swell. What's the matter? It's obvious you're lying, Joe. Obvious. Wow, it is obvious. Say, where you been hanging out? My, I know where especially. I... Especially, that's another one. Sure is getting fancy. <laughs> oh, dry up, will you? I got a right to do things my own way. Words is one way, the right words. Sure, Marge, sure, she was just only kidding. Use all the words in the deck. <laughs> I'm trying to help you, that's all. Only, it's gonna take time, it, more time than I thought. Take all the time you want, Mark. That's one thing I got plenty of this time. If you're surprised to see me here, I can't very well blame you. I guess I'm more glad than surprised. Nicely put. You're becoming quite a cavalier. What are those? Oh, those are word lists. I, I take the words out of the dictionary and I put them up there, the big ones. I learn them when I'm shaving and dressing. Ten new words a day to improve my vocabulary. Works wonders, too. Don't take much time. Uh, it doesn't take much time. <laughs> I felt like taking a walk this beautiful morning. And I have a message for you about Father. So I just thought I'd come and see you. Don't you even want to know what Father said? Oh, sure. Yeah, sure. The Lorelei's in port. And Father's agreed to go down and investigate conditions himself. See, that's swell. That's swell, and I want to be there when he gives Reagan the once-over. Yeah, your, your old man, he's all right. 
You know, funny, ain't it? You know, I go down there, I can't get to first base. You take one crack at him. Mr. Eden, you're forgetting your word lists. Yeah, but a lot of other things I'm, I'm going to remember, though, for a, a long time. <laughs> you know, Mr. Eden, if... If you use some of these words and talking to me, I'd really be confused. Like, like which one? This one. Thrasonical? Oh, that means, means, uh, boastful. Guy who brags a lot. But why this one? Oh, that know what nuisance means. I just put that up there for the spelling. Oh, excuse me. I, uh, I had a package for you. Oh, uh, meet Miss Morley. Connie, a friend of mine. How do you do? Pleased to meet you. Well, I, um, uh, well, goodbye then, Mr. Eden. I'll tell Father. Goodbye, Miss. And thanks a lot. Her old man's had a change of heart. He's gonna go down and look over his own ship. What was the name of the game you two were playing at the mirror? Peekaboo? No, we were looking at the words. Now, what do you got there, the death wagon? Yes, it came back. I sent it out again. Haven't you got anything better to do with your money? You waste yours mailing out those, those stories. They ain't ever gonna clear my brother. Look, Con, how many times have I gotta tell you I have to make a reputation with this stuff in order to make them take that? It seems kind of a long way around to me. I don't know. If you ask me, I think you're kidding yourself, Mark. You ain't a genuine writer. You're a fighter with words or fists, but a fighter. You don't belong with them, them books. But on a boat, uh, out to sea, that's where. Why don't you try to be a captain like, like Reagan? Show him how captains should be. That's what you ought to do. So I'm not a writer, huh? What about the death wagon? Well, that's different. That's a diary. That, that's real. It ain't made up. Well, Brissenden thinks I can write. I suppose she thinks so, too. Oh, maybe she does, maybe she don't. Oh, Maude, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I guess I just don't like to see you wasting your time this way. Sitting there pounding your brains out for nothing. It ain't for nothing. I'll show you. You just wait. I'll show you. I'll get you off. Yeah, and I'll make something of myself, too. Hello, Mr. Morley. McWaters, where's Captain Reagan? He's on deck, sir. <laughs> well, well, Mr. Morley, Captain? this is a real pleasant surprise. Oh, this is my daughter Ruth, Captain Reagan. Pleased to meet you, miss. And I guess you know Martin Eden. Who, oh, Mark? <laughs> Him and me been buddies since we was that high. Eight bells. Time for chow. Say, would you folks take potluck with us and look around after? Well, that's very nice of you, Captain. I'm sure it'd be very interesting to see how your men eat and live. Oh, Conklin. Yes, sir. Let's see what you got for the boys today. Big steak with onions, fresh peas, and ice cream later. Shall we go? What do you say, Mr. Eden? Will you join us? I might have known Reagan would be tipped off. Your old man was coming. Beef steak and onion. Ah, oh, that dirty lug don't miss a trick. You're forgetting your choice of words, Mr. Eden. I'm not thinking of words now. I'm thinking about how you and your old man was fooled by Mr. Reagan. You have very little trust in people, haven't you? Trust and Reagan just don't go together. I'm sorry, but I did my best. Sure. I know you did.
Why do you take so much interest in me, Miss Morley? Is it so much? Well, it seems a lot to me. I... I just think you have unusual possibilities. Oh, I... I brought a story along. I thought you might find time to read it. Read it to me. Hmm? Well, this here story's about... This story? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, this story's about me and Butch Reagan when we was kids. One night I was on a barge. It was loaded with junk. And I was looking it over and suddenly I spotted something. Reagan. And that's how I cleared a place with my fists. Every guy's got to clear his own place for reading or whatever he likes. And nothing can beat him if he knows what he's fighting for. Well, that's the story. You don't like it, huh? It's like all your other writing. Crude and brutal. Not very nice. Maybe not. But I gotta write what I know about, and most things I know about this world ain't very nice. But that's not a very good reason, I'm afraid. You have to consider your reader. You can't bring that world of yours into our drawing rooms. I did. Once. <laughs> You're right. Miss Morley didn't like it either. She said it was too crude. Well, that ain't my reason. It's just that your story... Well, it ain't true, Martin. You never actually licked Butch Reagan. And you claim here you got him down and made him say, Enough, mister. And then you say over here, Remember that mister, too. Well, it's got nothing to do with it. I'm writing... I'm writing fiction. You, you gotta give things a twist. Have it your own way, but if you ask me, and you won't, the only story that'll ever do you any good is a death wagon. That's my own personal opinion, and I give it to you free of charge. Oh, it's... That stuff's too crude. A new book I'm writing, though, has a, has a love story. More color. You never told me about that one. Mm -hmm. Oh, it isn't your kind of story. Oh. Oh, yeah. What would I know about a fancy love story? I'm not the type. I'm too crude, me and the death wagon. Go ahead, say I don't have to say it. Look at your hands. Oh, a factory done that. That's what I mean. Your hands tell a story. We're all of us crude. You, me, Joe, the whole set of 
And maybe my hands ain't as soft as silk, but I'm proud of the work they've done. And I know who's been putting all that, that crazy stuff in your head. Dry up, will you? That girl never done a lick of work in her life. Dry up, I said. All right, I'll dry up. Sure, I'm crude. When I do that, it always runs down my chin. <laughs> oh, uh, one of my two favorite readers. Yeah, run along, folks. I I'll join you later. Introduce me? Oh, Miss Connie Dawson, Mr. Brissenden. Nice oh, to don't, meet you. don't run away. Well, I uh, was going anyway. I got an appointment. Oh, uh, pleased to meet you. Yeah. Well, you mind if I sit down? Unless you'd rather I fall down. Still riding? Yes. Any luck? Uh, the death wagon's still coming back. <laughs> yeah, it always will. I got a new story, though. I think you'll like it. What's it about? Well... Kind of a love story. Really? Mm -hmm. It's about a girl I knew once in Tahiti. Tahiti? Say, I'd like to take a look at that. Where is that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Mr. Briston. Now, mail me his check and add a dollar for yourself. And tell my friend, oh, tell him to go and get me good and drunk. Yes, sir. Mr. Charge it to me. Thank you, sir. Lead on, MacDuff. Chapters aren't written yet. Well, uh, how's it gonna come out? Well, I don't know. I guess the girl's gotta send a guy away. No, no, no. no. You mustn't have an unhappy ending. No, but that's the way it really was. See, I knew the girl out in the islands. She was in love with a pal of mine, Mike Brodsky. She had leprosy. A beautiful kid had just a spot on her finger. She sent Mike away. The unfinished story. Moa Kaloa. Sounds like all the islands. It's got magic in it. Moa Kaloa. Ruth won't send you away. Ruth, send me? She's in love with you, chump. My word for it, I'm drunk. I'm very drunk. More color. Your hand feels soft as silk. like I'm on the wrong boat. Oh, Martin. OK. 
Okay, Miss Morley, I'll be polite, too. Come on, let me go. Sure, if that's what you want. I can't want anything when I know nothing will come of my wanting. Why not? What's to stop you? Father. Mother. Okay. Okay, you win. Pick up the chips. Martin, let's be sensible. I said okay, didn't I? Yes, you are, Ruth. I, I don't know. I just forgot for a moment that the age of miracles was past. Guys like me, we just don't marry girls like you. Unless I was somebody. And the rumor is I'm nobody. But you will be soon. Ruth, you really believe that honestly? Of course. If you'd only let Father keep your job. On a ship? Oh, no, not a sailor. A job with a company. With a good start, you'd be running it in a year. I couldn't take it up. Why not? For my writing. Your writing? What I'm writing for. Oh. A friend of yours that was sent to prison. I suppose he's more important than I am. It isn't that, Ruth. Well, that's the way it seems. Oh, wait a minute. Look, we gotta get this thing straight, Ruth, or we're not gonna get anywhere. I... I like a nice house like this. I, I like decent clothes, and I like to hear people speak right. Okay, I even like your old man, but I don't want to be like him. I want to be like myself. I want to get things for you my own way. I started out to do something my own way, and that's what I'm doing. Joe Dawson's part of it, but it's, it's bigger than him. It's, it, it's bigger than me. Well, you're the biggest part of it, Ruth, but it's bigger than you, too. stories to tell. Stories they'll buy. I know they will. But it takes time. That's all I need. Give me a year. A year more. I'll crack through by then. What if you don't, Martin? A year of waiting could be a long time. If I don't, when that time comes, I'll do anything you want. Your year is up. What does she mean, your year? Oh, the year doesn't matter. The point is, I can't go in these clothes. Everything else is in hock. I, uh, I wish I had some money to spare. I'd lend you some. I didn't ask you for anything. Maybe I ought to give up. Maybe you ought to give yourself a rest. You've been cooped up here for months now with that typewriter. Isn't that, Connie? It's just I'm not getting anywhere. I... Getting anywhere? You've had two stories published. Sure, but they didn't pay for them. Well, money isn't, isn't everything. I know those bromides, too. Look, Connie, it's just... I'm still here. Joe's still there. Martin, don't kid yourself. Maybe you started out to help Joe, but... Well, what you really want now is to be rich and famous like, like Brissenden. 
That's what's eating you. What's wrong with that? Nothing, nothing at all. Not if it helps Joe. That's why I sent out your novel, Moa Kaloa. You, you what? Well, the death wagon kept coming back all the time, and I figured you had to get some dough or bust, so I sent out your fancy love story. Oh, Moa Kaloa, that's not finished. I told him you were working hard on the end. Oh, you did? Yes, it's the Continental magazine, and they're taking it for a serial. The Continental? You're not kidding me, are you? The Con... Did they say when they pay? Not till it's finished. Oh, well, it don't help me much now. I know a way to get hold of some money. And going to that party means so much to you. Connie, if you can get me out of this spot, you can have anything you want. I want my money. Now, now, now. You, you, you can't get away with it. You've got to pay your bills sometime. I'll sue you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, look, I'm not in the printing business for the fun of it. If you don't, I'll... I, I'll sue you. Fakers. Grade A, first class fakers. Well, go on. After all, I do owe you some money. See how you make out. Mm. Look, I tell you, you better... You better wait out here. And there might be some trouble, huh? Yes? I'm Martin Eden. Well, well, well. Gentlemen, meet the man who wrote the best story we ever published. Marvelous story, Mr. Eden. Excellent. I want my money. Money? Yeah. Money. Fifteen bucks. Publication day was eight months ago. But, my dear Mr. Eden, naturally. Only today's Saturday. And the banks are closed. Oh, that's right. And our cashiers are on a vacation. Uh, come Monday. Yes, Monday. That's an excellent idea. I want my money right now. I come all the way over from Oakland. Marvelous place, Oakland. Yes. Wonderful city. <laughs> Look out! Stop it! Oh, stop it! Hey! How do I look now, huh? Pants could stand a pressing. Well, I haven't got time. You know? Hmm? If I had a beau coming to my dance, I'd like it if he brought me a corsage. A what? You know, flowers to wear. Oh, yeah. Well... Hey. Hmm? The Western magazine owes me ten dollars. They haven't paid either. Well, let's give them a call, too. Right. Thanks. It didn't work so good with a Western magazine, did it? Why didn't somebody tell me they had real cowpunchers running that magazine? <laughs> Took four of them to throw you out, though, Mort. You know, offhand, I should say that um, you're not stepping out tonight. Oh, I sure hate to miss that party. Well, you might as well forget about it. You'll be in here for a week, the judge said. I heard him. Would you like me to uh, telephone your excuses to the Morleys? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Connie, you better. You better. Tell them I'm, I'm detained on business. I'd be happy to do that for you. Hey, you don't have to be that happy. Martin. Hello, Connie. Did the week seem long? Oh, it's all over now. I'm out, so forget it, huh? Wait. I've got a surprise. Look. <laughs> Go on, look at it.
wonderful. It's like I'm, I'm drunk ten times over. It's... It's me. <laughs> it's me, all right. Kind of makes me feel funny inside, too. and everything. And it happened before the year was up. Martin, today's visiting day for Joe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, come on. I gotta go someplace else. Well, tell Joe I'll be around next visiting day, huh? Yeah, sure. Sure, don't worry about it, Martin. Go ahead. These old clothes, I better. No, I'll take them. Oh, these old clothes. Well, bye bye, Con. Well, Pop. Oh, hello. I want a Continental magazine, please. But you just bought one. I know, I want another one. I know the man who wrote this story. So? Maybe you can explain it, then. Hmm? Explain what? Something is very rotten in Denmark about this Moakaloa business. Hmm? Something is very rotten in Norway, too. These artists just came in. Martin Eden outside. Tell him I'm not at home. Yes, miss. Wait. Send him in. Yes, miss. to introduce myself. I'm Martin Eden Esquire. Writer of successful magazine stories. Don't look now, but I'm a success. See? If you didn't hear me, I'll say it again. I'm a success. Say, I uh, hate to bring it up at this point, but I'm afraid you're gonna have to marry me now. Oh, Martin, how could you do it? Do what? Steal that story from Christendom. I stole that from him. You can't believe that, can you? very name, Moa Kaloa. But there's no such place. I made up that name, Moa Kaloa. Like so many things you made up. What do you mean? I mean from the very beginning. In the death wagon, you made up things about Father's ship. Things you couldn't prove. I see what you mean. I, I see how this... More Kaloa business must look to you, but... Look, if I go to Brisson and he'll clear everything up, then will you listen? Ask me then. What you say, Mr. Brissenden? Martin Eden never stole a thing in his life. You know, if anyone had ever cared for me or believed in me as you do in Eden. And don't change the subject. 
Martin didn't steal that story from you. Oh. No. You stole it from him. Interesting idea. Only trouble is... Read this. Chris, you dog for the tenth time, where the Judas of the last chapters of Lady from Moa Karawa. Well? You see? From the editor of the Odyssey. See what? If I stole that story from Martin Eden, why didn't I steal the whole thing? Because he hadn't finished the story. Because you couldn't. Because the last four chapters aren't even written yet. Martin, come in. Just the man I want to see. Come in. Your friend here thinks I stole a story from you. Be a good fellow. Clear things up. First, how about a drink? I'll have one. Brissenden. Yes? I don't know how to begin. Something bothering you? Yes. Me? Yes. That's my talent. Bothering people, I mean. I suppose you two believe I stole a story from you. No. Good fellow. What makes you think I didn't? Because I happen to believe in you. Good enough reason. I think I'll have a drink. Wait. Mr. Brissenden, all my life I've looked up to you. Ever since I could read, I carried your book around like... like a Bible. I... What's your case? You read my story a year ago. One night when we were having supper with Connie at Fisherman's Wharf. You came home with me that night. Yes? I left you down the bar. When I came downstairs, you'd passed out. That, I'm sure, is correct. I carried you up to my room, and you came too long enough to read my story. You said it was good. If I said so, it must have been. Then you don't remember. What else? Oh, well, after reading it, why, you passed out again. Well, now, pause for a moment while I... while I gather my wits. This bottle has given me many an out. But I can't take that one. Truth's a hard master, Martin. But it's the only one that pays off in the end. I should remember what I wrote years ago. You reminded me of it that first night here. The only free man is a man strong enough to live by the truth and die by the truth. But you did this unconsciously. So much the worse. If I reach the place where I can steal another man's work and, and not know it. Just a minute. Wait. Where you, where you going? What are you going to do? What is it, Martin? Pretty tense, aren't you? Did you think I was going to walk out of here and put a bullet in my brain? <laughs> Don't be a fool. Why should I? I know it'll be a very dramatic end, but I'm not the one for sensational finishes. Won't be but a minute. I didn't want to hurt him. I, ever since I was a kid, I looked up to him like... Like he was some kind of god. A god with clay feet and a bullet in his brain. Running away is no good. I'm just getting out of blind alley, that's all. 
No, Brissenden was right. Fine words come a nickel a dozen, paid on publication day, maybe. You can't just walk out of the world this way. Think of all the things you wanted to do. All the hard work you've already done. So what? Look at Brissenden. What about fine thoughts and words and culture and books and all? Ah, don't make me laugh. It all just adds up to a hole in the head. Zero. Listen, Martin, there must be some way we can prove that you wrote that story. I don't want to prove it anymore. Give life a twist, he said. Well, he gave it a twist, all right. What about... what about Ruth Morley? We'll leave her out of this. All right, if that's the way you feel. That's the way I feel. I'm through. I see. I guess Joe was right. You remember that guy you were going to help? Free Joe Dawson, you said. No more death wagons in the world. You were going to make everybody listen. You were going to prove you were telling the truth and Reagan was telling lies. I thought there was something strong and fine in you that nothing or nobody could ever change. I guess all along, Joe was leaning on a broken stick. Broken stick. I did all I could. What more does she want? Buy me a drink and I'll listen, dearie. <laughs> ah, I knew there was a girl in it somewhere. Yeah, I know, but it ain't the same girl. What, two girls, dearie? Oh, my, my. Hey, buy me two drinks and I'll listen with both ears. Yeah, maybe if I went to Butch Ray and made him say the death wagon was true, then maybe Ruth. Yeah, maybe that's the answer. Which one was Ruth, dearie? Ruth, that's the one I gotta... I gotta prove something to. Yeah. And the other one? Connie? She's the one who gave me the answer. A lot of funny twists lately. Most of them have been on me. But from now on, the twist is on Butch Reagan. Come on down here, mister. With pleasure. Enough, mister. No. Mister. You remember that mister, because that mister means... That mister means you're going to sign your name to the truth. You're going to sign what I wrote. As follows. I do hereby solemnly... Not so fast, Mark. You know I'm not much of a writer. As follows. I do hereby solemnly swear... That every word written by Martin Eden. You 
were saying, Mr. Eden? All right. You've been asking for this for a long time, and now you got it. Just what Joe got, 10 years. Into the lazarette with you and your blasted books. 10 years, mister. Or until this stinking death wagon splits up like a rotten plum and sinks. Miss Dawson? Yes? I'm James Cotton from the Continental Magazine. Oh, yes, yes, I received your letter. I needn't tell you, Miss Dawson, how much it will mean to all of us if those four final chapters of Moa Kaloa can be found. I've searched everywhere. I honestly don't believe that he ever finished the story. Brissenden never turned in the end of the story, either. Even if we could find only the notes for the finish, it would show that Brissenden was a thief. May I look through his papers again with you? Of course, but I, I've looked and looked. Just once more. All right, come on. No. Well, that's every scrap of paper in the room. What's this? Oh, those are just the old clothes he wore when he was in jail that time. For trying to collect from editors. seem to realize that the wind has changed. And editors sail with the wind. A very sensational book. It's easy to see how it's caught the public's fancy. I'm asking for your legal opinion. Do you think it would stand up as evidence in court? No. No, I think not. It's obviously a work of fiction. It's not fiction. It's true. I don't want to be ashamed of the Morley line. I don't want to be ashamed of the name of Morley. Oh, but you're going to change it anyway, aren't you, dear? So why worry? Are you encouraging her about that brawling sailor? I thought you were against him. But Ruth has made him into a famous novelist. Things are different now. You better wait until we find out if he's ever coming back before you start quarreling over him. And me. My father used to write a bit. I'd like to have a literary man in the family. And I'd like to escape a government investigation of my ships. What's that they're bringing aboard? Electric ice box by Yemeni. Hey, what in the blaze is that thing doing on my ship? I'm afraid it's not your ship anymore, Captain Reagan. You're fired. Fired? I'll show you who's fired. Throw him and his icebox over the side. Over the side, I said. I'm afraid you're the one going over the side this time, Reagan. All right, Mr. Smithers. But I'm captain of this ship while I'm on board. Now you get the blazes off or till I go ashore.
You and your death wagon book cost me a good job. I'm going to murder you, Mr. Ryder. I'm not a writer anymore. The only writing I ever want to see again is your autograph. On a confession that says the book is the truth. Come and get it. I just got a fat royalty check for my book. I'm leaving part of it here to his credit with Smithers of the Morley office. You see that he gets what he needs, huh? I understand. And thanks, Doc. That's all right. What's the idea, Mark? You remember when you used to make us come up and ask you for a dime at a time? And one time the kid wanted money for postcards? Well, I'm going to leave that money with Smithers for you. But you're going to have to ask for it. A dime at a time. Fair enough, Mart. For a minute, I thought you was going soft. There's only one thing makes me feel bad. I won't have anybody to fight no more. So long, mister. Good sailing, Butch. to the clearing, he turned around and he waved to us. A minute later, he was gone. This is the last any of us ever saw or heard of Peterson. Well, that's a really remarkable story, Martin. It certainly is, Martin. Why haven't you published it? Oh, well, I will, I guess, if I ever get enough time to write it down. Well, you should take time for that one, Martin. It's even more interesting than the one in last month's Continental. Oh, you mean the backward track? I always kind of, kind of like that story. Well, I hope you're wrong. Why do you think I sent for you? He has it all right. Reagan's full confession. A signed confession? You're sure of it? Of course I'm sure. The point is, we've got to keep him from using it. Confound the death wagon committee. They would have to win a retrial right at this time. Well, it may not be as bad as you think. What do you mean? Ruth. Ruth? We're going to come right to the point with you, Mr. Eden. 
You know the retrial of the Lorelei case comes up day after tomorrow. Yes. We want to ask you not to use that confession. Well, that's why I went after Butch Reagan. His confession will get Joe Dawson out of prison. But suppose we show you a different way, a better way for all of us. We're being very frank with you, Eden, because we feel you're one of us now. I've cleaned up my ships, Martin. You know that. I'll admit there were things going on behind my back, but... Well, we can't let the public believe that Death Wagon was 100% true. It would ruin my business, my family. I don't think you'd want that. No. Well, here's our proposition. We want you to go into court and testify that Death Wagon is fiction, not fact. And in return, we give you our word. Within a year, your friend will be out. Pardoned. Father, that's a marvelous solution for everybody. Pardoned? Joe wouldn't want to be pardoned. A pardon leaves a man guilty. Joe wants to be cleared. Be practical, Eden. Compromises are necessary all through life, my boy, if a man wants to get on. Is that what you want, Ruth? Yes. Martin. Honey. Oh, I was coming around to see you tomorrow. Well, I'm at the committee headquarters. Oh, yes, I know. I was coming around there, too, but... Listen, Martin, if you're thinking of explaining what you're doing here with these... These mucky mucks. It's all right with us. It's all right with me, too, except for one thing. Where do you stand in the case now? Stand? Well, I don't need to ask what they want you to do about it. What are you going to do about it? Listen, come on. Joe's going to get off anyway. Anyway? However I testify, however the case goes, Joe's going to be pardoned. They said it. They promised. And you think that lets you out? I mean, out of telling the truth. We could win this case without you, Mark. But we can't win it against you. Now, which is it going to be? Mr. Morley, how long had Captain Reagan been in your employ at the time of the mutiny? Eight years. The last three as captain. Did you consider him a good captain? Naturally, otherwise I wouldn't have kept him on. Mm. Is Captain Reagan the type of officer who might give his men any justifiable cause for mutiny? Absolutely not. I object, Your Honor. Objection overruled. Mr. Morley, do conditions aboard your cargo vessels in any way justify the mutiny of the prisoner, Joe Dawson, or the allegations made by Martin Eden and his book, The Death Wagon? They do not. Did you ever discuss these so-called conditions with Mr. Eden? Certainly I did. I'm always anxious to check up on our ships. So I went aboard the Lorelei a few months after the mutiny with Mr. Eden himself. And even he had to admit he was wrong. I object. Exception. You may have the witness. Isn't it true, Mr. Morley? that very recently, since the publication of the Death Wagon, you improved the food on your ships? It's our policy always to improve conditions on our ships. But isn't it also true that since the publication of the Death Wagon, you replaced Captain Reagan? It's our policy always to improve the personnel of our ships. I think Mr. Eden will substantiate this later. I told you so, little rat. He's going to sell Joe right down the river. Miss Morley, how long have you known Martin Eden? I object, Your Honor. Martin Eden is not on trial here, neither is his book. This is a trick to obscure the fact that the prisoner has been unjustly sentenced. Your Honor, we intend to show that Martin Eden and his book have been responsible for the trial. And Death Wagon is a tissue of lies, fiction, not fact. Objection overruled. Proceed. Miss Morley, did you ever have any discussion with Mr. Eden about his book? Many times. He and I and, and Mr. Brissenden. Mr. Brissenden taught him that writers have to, well, to exaggerate the truth in order to be sensational. Did Mr. Eden say that in so many words? Yes, sir. A shock value, we called it. He said the death wagon is going to shock them right out of their... their something. <laughs> 
I understand. Your witness? No questions. Lies. What did I tell you? They've rigged me again. You may step down, Miss Morley. Next witness. Martin Eden. Martin Eden. your right hand. You do solemnly swear the testimony you shall give upon the trial of the case now before this court is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Did you write a book called The Death Wagon? I did. Is that a copy of it? You have that? The original manuscript. Your Honor? Your Honor? Exhibit A. Now then, Mr. Eaton, tell us one thing. Is this book a work of fact or fiction? The death wagon is all true, Mr. Attorney. Every living word, it is not fiction. <laughs> Martin Eden has attained a wide reputation as a writer of fiction. We have no reason to believe that of all these stories, this one is fact. I think you'd call this Exhibit B, Your Honor. I said I'd make the whole world listen to the truth day. Well, it took me a little longer than I thought. Not with words alone, or fists alone. Not even by myself alone. I almost gave up there once. But a certain friend of mine shamed me into not being a quitter. So I kept on and got what I was after. A clincher, so you don't have to take my word for it alone. May I read it? Proceed. To whom it may concern. I do hereby solemnly swear that every word written by Martin Eden in his book, The Death Wagon, is the living gospel truth. So help me God. Signed, Butch Reagan.